So I guess I'm a simple man since simple man started playing. I didn't realize that. I can play songs out my rear. Friday. Well, this is the Ferris project and the last time we were here was demolition phase and putting up new stud walls and ceiling framing. So let's see where we're at. These rocks should not be here. I don't know if somebody stepped on them and moved them over. But... I don't think they were locked up the last time. Those are cooking rocks. They are cooking. They are definitely cooking. Here. It's a little better. Since nobody, answered, since nobody answered the door, I'll just announce myself. We still have the key. Well, the last time we were here, there was dust proofing, framing. We've done sheetrock. We've got painting going on. Looks to me like this needs another coat of paint. We'll probably have one more coat to put on here. We usually put the first coats, and then after all the trim is done, we do our second coat. And there's always a few little nicks like that. And that's why we put the second coat on. This is interesting. Not only is it interesting, but beautiful. Look how this has been opened up now. This is where we were whacking the, the countertop here before. Right here, Morgan remembers. These are not demo hammers. That's nudging hammers. And so we're installing appliances. This has all been opened up to the living room now. And this is the cabinets were right here in the demo day. Mm -hmm. This is where they were banging on those cabinets. What a difference, huh? It makes it look, look so the, much bigger. Look at the beautiful cabinets that go all the way to the ceiling, the uppers, the high uppers. We've got more cabinetry here. We've got a beautiful LVP floor. And this LVP flooring created a problem for us. We ended up cutting it real close, but what ended up happening was it was too close and they didn't have any more in the United States that we could find. So our, since we're a dealer, they offered to let us get another flooring, complete new flooring. Wow. It did cost us a little money in the labor, but we're the dealer, so we, we end up taking care of it. And We've got flooring that we're going to use in our office now. <laughs> we're going to use it for our office, so we did get that contribution. That helps cover the labor of installing it. But this this flooring is looking really nice. It is a you can see the um, hand scraped on it. It looks so real. It looks so real, yeah. It sure does make this whole space feel so much bigger. It really does. And the so skylight. And the cost of the LVP flooring is one-fourth to one-fifth the cost of putting in wood flooring. Usually about one-fifth less. I like the way we did see the, the little bitty nice little kick out on that particular trim that we used. I like to see a trim that has a, has a real close, once you add the, the caulk bead that we're going to add, it almost rolls right into the wall. And the paint goes from paint to paint. And then this one, particular one, has a little kick out on it that makes it look like a shoe mold, but a little daintier version of a shoe mold. That's a very nice molding. Now you can get it in different sizes, but uh, that all comes in one piece. And then again, when you, when you add this coffee that you want for flex and for, for uh, gapping and so forth, variations in the wall, that all just makes it disappear. You put a nice coffee in there. It's about a quarter inch wide at the top of the table. And why, by the time you add your caulk bead, it doesn't allow dust to catch on it. Anything that's flat like that will allow dust to catch on it. And they, so often people are using what's called a casing trim for base trim. And a casing trim, as we'll look at over here, has a much bigger half inch lip on it, even on the small side. 
It can be three eighths to half an inch like it is here. This is even greater. This is about five eighths. And on this side, which we can see here, is about seven sixteenths. And it, and it catches a lot of dust. When you turn this up, it catches a lot of dust. That's not what we, we'd recommend. Now, some people insist that we do it, but it's not what we'd recommend. Variations in walls. This is, a, this is what you see here. A little bit of variation in the wall. This is an existing wall. We're putting trim on it. We're not going to go through the trouble of straightening a wall just to put trim on it. But what we can do is let the trim be straight. You, you can create gradual bends in, in base trim on long, long shout, long areas that have gradual bends. But this is too short of a distance between where it's catching and where it's catching here. So there's a little gap there. And that's where that caulk bead that's of substantial size needs to be put in to bridge that. Once it's done, you're not gonna see it. The eye will not catch it. It's gonna look like a very straight wall. But if you use the wrong kind of trim, then you're not gonna be able to hide that. And that's something that doesn't allow for that caulk bead to go on. Or a trim that can't be flexed is not necessarily a good thing either. So you have to pick the trim that you want to use in, for your project and realize the limitations of your project. It doesn't mean that you can't do, you can do anything you want to do, but money starts going up if you start having to fix other issues related to it. And a lot of inexperienced people will put in a trim that is really not well suited for that project. And so normally what happens is, is they're, they're not going to be satisfied with the looks of it. The client's not going to be satisfied, but a lot of times they're not educated enough to know that it was really the client, the contractor who should have given them better guidance. The contractor doesn't take, take responsibility for that. He says, this is what you want and this is what I do. We're going to give you recommendations so that things do look correct and that we can do a good job. If we tell you we're going to install something for it, we're doing what it takes to install that. So I guess I'm a simple man. Since simple man started playing, I didn't realize that. I can play songs out my rear. <laughs> this is a double oven. What do you mean? It's two separate? Yeah. Okay, there's a small, very small oven. Oh, or you can do the whole thing at once. And it has a divider in it. Mm-hmm, there's a little. Oh, nice, it completely separates it. So you can do two separate temperatures, cook separately. Oh, nice. So for Thanksgiving, you can put the turkey in one and the pies in the other. You can't see how that breaks. That break is so clean in here where it, where it bends. Do that again. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. This is Samsung. Because it's an opening in the bigger door. The bigger door opens up. You nice. can see it right here that the bigger door opens up. So you put a lever, and if you don't, if you don't do the lever, the whole thing opens. Mm -hmm. How nice! Look at the floor. And look at the shower. The blinds are right. the old blinds are being stored here right now because we're about to, about to install. They were in the closet, so the glass will be installed soon. And a nice little bench that matches the countertop. The granite matches the granite on the countertop, and then we'll have a nice tile backsplash being installed here with new lights. Look at the nice tower cabinet with the full drawers, the full pull-outs, again, full, all wood, dovetail joints, soft clothes needs to be adjusted. All that will be adjusted. You can see the, here's a good example of what the rails look like. And they can snap loose, but they're very, very solid rails. That's what those soft clothes features look like. We've got extra floor covering here. This, by the way, is Ram board. McCoy is one of our sponsors where we buy these products from. We buy most of our products from McCoy's. And this is a great product. It's, it's not like cardboard. It's much, much more dense. And it's not like putting brown paper on the floors that can get just torn. Tear. That get just get torn. They can last, and we can reuse it sometimes, but most of the time it gets thrown away quickly. But the main thing is it's protecting what's below it. So that if you have something in your shoe, if you have, uh, even we're putting a little bit of lumber on there in that particular case, and we were, by the way, we were given all the downstairs on this project. So it's not like most projects where we have people coming in and out all the time. We've had this project downstairs entirely to ourselves. So we were able to store some of our product indoors where normally we can. And so that's why you see some things lying around. But whatever, whatever the situation is, it saves you money if, you can, if we can get the whole area.
because we don't have as much logistical work to do. But we've got a little bit left to do, so we don't want to tear up anything. And it's about timing. Sometimes we put the floor in last, but in this case, we needed to put it in early to earlier to keep it to keep things moving. So we protect it, and it's not going to be damaged at all. Oh, did you hear that? I did. That's the sound of a deadbolt hitting the jam. And what that means is that this is not secure. This could be opened easily. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just listen to this. There's a clicking noise. And we didn't hear that clicking noise. So what that means is if we look at the deadbolt and we go out almost all the way, we can lock it, we can lock it in. It's a bald one, it's a good one. But what happens if it doesn't go all the way? This is what happens. When it's out, when it's out all the way, you cannot push this strike back, the, the, the strike, the deadbolt right back in. But notice if it's just a little bit less, it's easily pushed in. Well, that is not a security, and I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure we should be hearing that clicking noise. You always want to hear that, hear that clicking noise. So that the bolt is fully extended, and that way it has that locking device on it. Coincidentally, we're going to be talking about security and safety on our radio show tomorrow. Yeah, so we have to get that adjusted. I need to take a picture of that and send it to the project manager to make sure they take care of it for the client. These are my reminders. I'm going to put the key in it. And let the homeowner know we're going to take care of that. It's not safe. See, that's, that's hitting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not getting it turned all the way. They've lived, like, they've lived with it like that way for years. They shouldn't allow the manufacturer should not allow that to the key to even be pulled out unless it goes all the way. But they they haven't designed it that any of them that way that I've seen yet. So this is one little thing we can take care of before we make it a better home.